Welcome to this video about Cartesian coordinates versus polar coordinates. So if you have a plane and a point in a plane, like here, you can describe its location in two ways by using coordinates. One must be very familiar and the other one hopefully also as well, but usually less. The one is where you, uh, you give an x coordinate, like, you know, it's the distance on the x-axis, not exactly the distance, but the location, and a y coordinate like that, and in this case it's minus 3 square root of 3. And together these two coordinates determine the position. Another way, uh, this is called, by the way, Cartesian coordinates, the other way is polar coordinates, and there you give a distance from the origin, which is usually denoted by r, so in this case r is 3, and you give an angle with the positive x-axis and the radius. So in this case you go around like this, I could draw it already, if this is the radius, whew, not bad. Um, then this angle is, uh, in this case, uh, 5 pi over 4 radians. So, and the distance here equals uh, 3. And, uh, yeah, for many situations in physics, you actually want to have the choice whether you want to continue your, co your calculations in polar coordinates or Cartesian coordinates, and you have to be able to move from the one to the other. Unfortunately, that's facilitated by some uh, straightforward formulas. I put them here. Uh, this is to go from polar to Cartesian. You plug in your polar coordinates here and you get your Cartesian coordinates. And these ones are the other way around. You plug in your Cartesian coordinates here and you compute r and theta. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to both use the formulas and then also I'm going to say a little bit about in many cases it's good to just also make the picture and think about it geometrically. It will help you not make mistakes, and it will help you do exact calculations and stuff, stuff like that. So uh, there we go. Let's start with uh, the one at the bottom, and let's try to compute x and theta. So if I just plug the numbers in the formulas, then x would be computed by r, which is 3, times the cosine of 5 pi over 4. And uh, the y would be 3 times the sine of 5 pi over 4. Now maybe you're very good at remembering all these values and then you, you just plug in the outcome, you get 3 times minus uh, 1 half square root of 2 and here you get 3 times, well the same actually, minus 1 half square root of 2. So the outcome would be minus 3 over 2 the square root of 2. And here they say minus 3 over 2 the square root of 2. Now personally I actually often forget these values, so I like to look at the picture. And uh, in, in this case that's, uh, that's just very helpful. What you could do is you could complete this into a little uh, triangle. There you, you have a triangle and it, just to compute the x and the y coordinates, it really helps to compare this to a standard triangle, which is a half a square with side 1. 1, 1, square root of 2, which, as you know, has these angles pi over 4 here and there. Here also pi over 4. Now, why is this useful? Because actually, if this total angle is 5 pi over 4, here you have uh, the stretched angle, which is pi, and then there's what's left here is this little bit of pi over 4. So these triangles are similar. Ah, similarity. That, so that means that I could actually compute the lengths of these sides by a similarity argument. I could see how this triangle is a magnification of this triangle. So let's see what's the magnification or enlargement factor from this triangle to the other. Well, here the diagonal side is square root of 2 and there it's 3. So basically if I, if I enlarge first with a factor of square root of 2, then it would be 2, and then with a factor of 3 over 2, then it's done. So the, 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 the factor here, let's call it f, is uh, 3 over 2 times square root of 2. Uh, just to check once more, square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2, 2 times 3 over 2 is 3, and then I end up with the right sides. So actually the length here is uh, 3 over 2 square root of 2, and the length here is 3 over 2 squared of 2. And now the only thing I have need to do to get the right Cartesian coordinates is take care of the signs. And of course, 
we're in the third quadrant, as they call it, and uh, all signs need to be negative. So that's a more geometric way to solve the problem, simply using these uh, well-known triangles. All right, so we just apply this formula to go from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. Now let's try the other way around. And uh, we do it with this uh, point here. So let's first uh, simply apply the formulas. Then r equals the square root of minus 3 squared plus the square root of 3 squared. Well, so far so good. So I get the square root of 9 plus uh, 3, which is, of course, the square root of 12. And uh, that's equal to uh, 2 times the square root of 3. OK, and then for the other one, we know that the tangent of theta equals y over x. And that's equal to, um, let's see, well, there's my y, square root of 3 divided by 3. And now it all comes, ah, minus 3. And now it all comes down to knowing your tangent values again. But uh, if you do, you might be able to go from here to the fact that theta is exactly uh, 5 pi over 6. Now, again, I usually forget such things. So I like to look at the geometric picture. Now, let's see. And I can, I can use a similar sort of argument. I can look at this, this triangle here. And it's actually, uh, it's, it's a familiar one, but I have to look carefully. So this distance here equals 3. And this distance here equals uh, square root of 3. Now that somehow reminds me of this triangle, which is half of an equilateral triangle, where this side is the square root of 3, this one is 1, and this side equals 2. It's a, it's, it's a triangle that you need to know to be able to reason the way I do right now. But if you do, then life is good. So here is pi over 6, and there is pi over 3. So instead of remembering all these values, I like to remember just these triangles. Now we're going to play the same game. There's an enlargement factor here at, at stake. And this is the thing you really have to see. I, 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 because I work so often with these triangles, I notice that I can go from there to there, back and forth, multiplying or dividing by a factor of square root of 3. Well, let's call it f again, our, 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 our enlargement factor. So, well, but once we've done this, then the rest rolls out, because then the diagonal here should, of, of course, also be uh, square root of 3 times this 2. So 2 times the square root of 3, which is indeed exactly the r that we got here after our calculation. And then, of course, this angle here is that angle. This is pi over 6. But that means that, of course, the theta will be pi minus pi over 6, which is the 5 pi over 6. So there you go. For people who like to memorize uh, values of sines and cosines of tangents, then you can just apply these formulas to move back and forth. Really take care with sines here that you end up in the right quadrant. And uh, for those of you who like to think geometrically, uh, make the picture work with these sort of triangles uh, to help you to find also the same answers, but slightly differently. Generally, I would advise you, if you are asked to you move, move from one to the other, definitely make this picture and make sure you get those angles exactly right, uh, because you might get a factor of pi out, right? Taking inverse of uh, sine, cosine of tangent. So take care there. And then everything is going to be all right. Success.